Sio, hello, everyone, welcome. Galigia Kuesque, Dancing Heron, Dances with Death, Call Me Gail. I'm in my Seligi ancestral homeland in Wayumi, Gunaita, the French Broad River Basin, in Takiosti, so called Asheville, North Carolina, living on the oldest mountain on Turtle Island, our sacred mountain called Adagul, which means helping many people. We are the people who resisted both the removal on the Trail of Tears and the reservation called Cherokee by hiding in these mountains. And the reason we were able to do that was primarily because of the plant medicine. The federal troops came in and killed all the animals, hoping to starve us out. But the plant medicine kept us alive and continues to help us in so many ways. And so I'm burning the sage now to clear our field around us. And to the sage, I add our ancestral version of sage, also called everlasting and fondly called rabbit tobacco, which is one that we sniff because it's so wonderful. And I would also like to um, share the cedar tree medicine that calls in our ancestors and listen if you will for the little pop if i can find the cedar in my medicine bag here Actually, in my turtle shell, I'm hoping. Yeah, okay. So the chaga ember is from the trees that first brought fire to the people. And the cedar leaf invites our ancestors to join us today. And I offered them the heart medicine from the hawthorn tree up on the mountain, a little hawthorn leaf that I gathered last spring, and it's almost time to go gather again. And this is one that's medicine that we sniff a little bit, okay? And then we offered them the lobelia, which is our native ancestral for them okay well i'm getting an echo here do you know pam what's echoing yeah yeah sorry i was doing something on my other computer okay okay so we're good with that Okay, so we offer the lobelia and ask it to interpret between us and the other plants and the animals and the trees that we'll suck with today. We're grateful to all these plant medicines and to all of you for being here with us today. And so we bring in the sweet grass. To remind us of the sweetness that we always share with each other and with our ancestors. Okay. Today I want to share my experience of our 
Cherokee prophecies because they're so relevant to the times that we're in right now. The prophecy talks about each of us as a particular race and color of the directions that we scattered into holding teachings and sharing these teachings in times like these in seventh generation and in times of need so that we can help humanity continue as long as we share these teachings humanity this wave of humans that we are in will continue and if we uh, abuse the teachings and don't share the teachings then um, it will be the end of this wave of humans like it has been so many before us the ancient ones and and so many before us so as the red race we hold the plant teachings the medicine teachings and they're actually held by the hopi people and these are the teachings of the earth and the medicine teachings are being abused by the pharmaceutical industry at this time so we all want to contribute to bringing that back into balance in any way that comes to us that we can and the black race here on you know this martin luther king and black history month we want to acknowledge the the medicine teachings that the black race holds in the base of the mountain in kenya it's the teachings of power through humility and it's actually the teachings of the water and we can see the example of this in nelson mandala he was a beautiful example of power through humility and several other you know people have come to the forefront to share this with us and also um, there may have been some abuse in the hierarchy that allowed the black people to be sold into the slave trade i don't really know of a lot of abuse of the black race but I encourage you to think about that and, and help bring us all back into balance in any way that comes to you. The yellow race is the Tibetan people and it holds the spiritual teachings of the wind. And we can see that very clearly in the Dalai Lama and all the teachings that he shares. He's a beautiful example and of course, there's a little bit of um, abuse in the spiritual teachings in China's invasion of Tibet. And you may see other areas where there's a little bit of abuse in the spiritual teachings, hierarchy again, and things like that. And then the white race holds their teachings in Zurich, just outside of Switzerland. And these are the teachings of the minerals. And there is, of course, you know, this is the teaching of fire. So there is abuse in the atomic weapons. There's abuse in um, the fossil fuels that are so prevalent in our culture right now. And I want to share my experience of these particular white teachings. In 1994, I was in Zurich cooking for um, a retreat by a Swami from Sri Lanka. And the owner of the retreat came to meet me for the first time and he didn't even say hello. He just said, you are Salagi. And I was very surprised because I've never experienced being recognized like that in Europe before. And so I just nodded Yes, I'm Salagi. And the next thing he said was, and you know the songs. And I nodded again. At that time, I did know the songs, and I do know the songs in our medicine ways. And he turned to his wife, and he said something in Swiss German that I couldn't understand the word of. But he turned back to me and he said, my wife will come for you in the morning. 
and she'll take you to the caves where the white race teachings are held so you can sing the songs. And I was really surprised at this point. So all I could do was just nod. And he reached over on the bookshelf and he handed me a book that was all about our prophecy. This one that I just shared with you. And his wife came in the morning and we all four got into the car and we drove a couple hours out of Zurich and we um, drove out into the countryside towards the base of the Alps. We drove through a small town and then it looked like we just went uh, to the edge of the town and it was something like a vacant lot or a very natural area, just um, nothing in particular, but she parked the car and we got out and we walked into this area of the countryside that looked like a vacant lot and suddenly there was this big opening to a cave. And so it was a beautiful cave. It was just very natural, nothing around it, nothing special about it, just a big open area under an opening in the rocks. And um, so I offered the plant medicine like I just did. And I started singing the songs. And the Swami got spooked. And so he left. And the woman that drove us there, I don't know if she got spooked or if she just went to make sure she took care of the Swami, but the two of them left and it was just me and the sister that she had brought to be with me there in the cave singing the songs. And I noticed at one point she was down on her knees and she was sobbing and I had no idea. We, she didn't speak English and I didn't speak Swiss German, so we couldn't really communicate. But when I finished singing the songs and I turned to see if she was okay, she just said, I see angels. So that was really all I knew at that time. But I want to share with you more of our teachings of the plant medicine. And this is why we're working with the trees today. Trees hold our plant medicine as well as the plants. And they are wonderful helpers when we learn to listen to them and to work with them. So I want to start um, with a quote from one of our anthropologists who shared the initial teachings from the Saliki people from our medicine men, swimmer primarily. And I'm quoting, this was, you know, after the animals tried to balance man because the men had, um, people had become greedy and were abusing the plant medicine. And so the, the animals tried to bring them back in balance with the diseases. The diseases come from the animals and the plants were helpers. So I'm quoting from James Mooney's book, when the plants who were friendly to man heard what had been done by the animals, they determined to defeat their evil designs. Each tree, shrub, and herb, down even to the grasses and mosses, agreed to furnish a remedy for someone of the diseases named, and each said, quoting, I shall appear to help man when he calls upon me in his need. So that's what we're learning today, how to call upon the plants in our need. Thus did medicine originate and the plants, every one of which has its use, if we only knew it, furnish the antidote to counteract the evil wrought by the revengeful animals. When the doctor is in doubt what treatment to apply for the relief of a patient, the spirit of the plant suggests to him the proper remedy. This is why we learn to connect with the spirit of the trees and the spirit of all of the plants so that they can help us in these medicine ways. And now I want to share a quote by Black Elk. In the late 1800s, Oglala Lakota holy man, Hehakasapa, Black Elk, had a vision at the age of nine when he became ill and had a near-death experience. When he awoke and shared his vision, he felt the dream was a prophecy of a great suffering 
that would soon set upon native people. And it wouldn't be until seven generations later that a sacred duty would be laid upon the people to take a stand for their relatives and the earth again. In his vision, he saw a great tree that symbolized all life on earth. He foresaw war, famine, and sickness among his people, and their sacred circle would be broken. After seven generations of this darkness, there would be a reuniting, not only for his people, the Lakota, but for all people on earth. The seventh generation will take back what little culture and rights remain and amplify positive change for future generations that don't yet exist. Today, many elders and native leaders see a clear rise of the seventh generation in their people. And now, as you give that, let that sink in, I wanna share a quote from Herman Hesse. For me, wrote the German poet, novelist, Hermann Hesse, quoting, trees have always been the most penetrating preachers. I revere them when they live in tribes and families and forests and groves. And even more, I revere them when they stand alone. In their highest boughs, the world rustles. The roots rest in infinity, but they do not lose themselves there. They struggle with all the force of their lives for one thing only, to fulfill themselves according to their own laws, to build up their own form, to represent themselves. Nothing is holier, nothing is more exemplary than a beautiful, strong tree. When a tree is cut down and reveals its naked death wound to the sun, one can read its whole history in the luminous inscribed disc of its trunk, in the rings of its years. Its scars, all the struggle, all the suffering, all the sickness, all the happiness and prosperity stand truly written. The narrow years and the luxurious years, the attacks withstood, the storms endured, and every young farm boy knows that the hardest and noblest wood has the narrowest rings. Pamela, there's somebody we need to admit, I think. Thank you. That high on the mountains and in continuing danger, the most indestructible and strongest, the ideal trees grow. A longing to wander tears my heart when I hear trees rustling in the wind. At evening, Herman Hesse continues, if one listens to them silently for a long time, this longing reveals its kernel, its meaning. Hesse says, it is not so much a matter of escaping from one's suffering, though it may seem to be so. It is a longing for home, for a memory of the mother, for new metaphors of life. It leads home. Every path leads homeward. Every step is birth. Every step is death. Every grave is mother. So the tree rustles in the evening when we stand uneasy before our own childish thoughts. Trees have long thoughts long breathing and restful, just as they have longer lives than ours. They are wiser than we are, as long as we do not listen to them. But when we have learned how to listen to trees, then the brevity and the quickness and the childlike hastiness of our thoughts achieve an incomparable joy. Whoever has learned how to listen to trees, no longer wants to be a tree. He wants to be nothing except what he is. That is home. That is happiness. I'm 
One more quote taken from the 2005 award-winning film Queen of Trees depicts the mythology surrounding the sycamore fig tree, a native tree to Central Africa. Kenyan folklore and the traditional narratives of the Kikuyu people, the largest ethnic group in Kenya. And these are the people who hold the teachings in our prophecies. Have long revered and worshiped the fig tree as sacred. Quote, in Africa, there lives an extraordinary tree. She is queen of the riverbank, a monarch whose story stretches back millions of years. In tribal cultures, her mysterious ways have fueled myth and legend. They set her apart from other trees. She is a sycamore fig, queen of Africa's trees. And Crazy Horse said, I see a time of seven generations when all the colors of mankind will gather under the sacred tree of life and the whole earth will become one circle again. And that's us. That's what we're doing today. We're gathering and becoming one circle and learning to listen to the trees and learning to dance with the trees and with all the plants of the earth. And so I'm going to sing the first song that I sang in the cave outside of Zurich. And I'm going to sing it with my Tupelo tree drum. You can see the tree, the ring of this tree that holds the bear's honey and also makes our drums. And I invite you to sing along if you want to. It's just a weaving. Our songs are not all together now. They're more of a, a weaving and wandering and harmonizing and just being together. So sing with your unmuted or with your mic muted any way that you're comfortable. But this is also a song that makes us one mind. Some call it a mind clearing song. Some call it mindfulness. But we're going to begin our dance this way. sure that it's at the beginning sometimes it uh, doesn't remain set on YouTube at the beginning and I encourage everyone to dance or watch we're going to use um, some some ritual aids when we are in ritual we return to original experiences of humanness Ritual is a full bodied experience moving into a heightened state that changes consciousness. The embodied symbolic integrates just below levels of body and mind. Our soul's capacity to reach the collective world soul lies there. Symbol expresses what cannot be said. So Molly and I are going to dance together and we encourage everyone watching the video to dance with us also and we're going to use the movements first of the roots of the trees spreading our palms and keeping our feet planted firmly while we reach down to the center of the earth and center ourselves in connection 
with the center of the earth. And then we're going to go into the bud, the seed, the seed symbol with our hands. You can see that we can look inside the seed and see the potential. We can look beyond our thumbs, which are tucked in. And then the next movement that we'll do with our hands is the opening of the seeds. As you see, our hands go into the symbol of the flowers first together, and then we're going to open them and furl and twirl with the flowers, with the petals of the flowers. And then we'll have the leaves of the tree as they shimmer in the wind. And when the rains are coming, the, the trees will tell you their leaves turn upside down and shimmer. So we're going to dance with our hands together like this in ritual ceremony. And then we return to the holding of ourselves, the holding of our heart and our belly. And we return to the roots where we began. And this is symbolic of transformation. As the the leaves fall and the tree falls, it returns to the earth, and the whole tree is containing every, is contained in every leaf. So we can feel that and, and we can feel the connection with the trees as we dance in this ritual ceremony. So whenever you are ready, Pamela, As the trees dance us, we feel roots reaching for the center of earth, and we move holding feet firmly in place, just drinking in the darkness. We are all woven fibers, yielding to forces unknown, going with flowing water and winds, nurturing strength and resilience. For one minute now, our open hands are reaching into the earth like the mycelium. Grieving with the spirit of the trees for the unforgivable actions of human dominion wailing with the winds of sorrow for unjust actions of humanity, cleansing regrets and culturing compassion with respect and accountability. For one minute our fists hold this tension and pain as we are grounded in the center of our Mother Earth. together in the image of seeds. For two minutes we are birthing leaves to comfort shared sorrows as we are danced into buds, tightly holding ourselves and each other before spreading magic whispers of wings to the world, energies arising for openings unknown.
minutes, seed palms come apart with wrists turning for flowers, feeding beauty with balance, unfurling in wondrous ways, swirling and twirling while centered and securely attached to branches reaching for the sun, colors coming to soothe our spirit. shimmy with excitement like leaves dancing and singing through oxygenated air and energy shared with all life. Some remaining as evergreens and some dancing into the reds and golds we love. Canopies with each leaf containing all of the whole tree. to their last dance and cycling back into the earth to feed roots. Wisdom of many such cycles embodied in the ancient trees, sharing warmth and whispers of wise ways, fueling fires with heartfelt life force and sheltering dreams of unity as we connect through their roots and listen closely to their voice. In this final two minutes, our hands hold ourselves and then our heart and belly as we learn to listen to trees and earth.
Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you all who joined us here. Ah, we're so grateful to be able to feel the trees and feel the nature around us and share learning to listen to the plants, to the trees, to the plant medicine. And so at this time, I want to invite um, Molly, if she's caught her breath, or Gabri, if she's not, whichever one of them wants to, to step forward and share their experience of the synergy of coming together in ways like this, because we all actually met on Zoom. And we were doing the first transformation dance and the dream work, the Jungian dream work, and uh, it just brought the synergy up so real for us. We could feel the connection and something that we needed to do to share with all of you and with each other. And actually, the person who asked for this tree dance, Tessa Teresa Earthheart, is someone I met a couple years ago. And we were both working on our um, certification in the Talking Circle Leadership Training. So it's through that group that we come here today. And I know John Raymer is going to talk about synergy because that's a big reason of why he's here and why we're able to do this and to share it with you in these beautiful ways through Sign Network. We're so grateful for that. and. And so um, Molly Toasty is a mom, a gardener, an activist, an artivist, and she's going to share her experience with trees in the urban setting of the city and her campaign to, for protection of the trees and the rights of the trees and nature. And then she's going to um, we're going to ask her husband, Gabri, who did the music, to share his experience with listening to the plants and creating the music for this dance. And then we're going to invite anyone else who wants to share experiences to join us. So, Molly, if you've caught your breath and you'd like to, to come in now and unmute yourself and share your activism experiences and let people know how everybody can help the trees at this point when it's so needed. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Gail, for leading us into this beautiful ceremonial space. So much love and gratitude for you and for your teachings. Oh, my, heart's, my heart is bouncing with joy just listening to you. So grateful to be here in this space. Um, missing our sister, Tessa, sending love. Yeah, so um, yeah, we met through the really beautiful connection with the, uh, through the dream work that um, Gail held. And um, I had a dream when I was dreaming that the indigenous people will lead us in a ceremonial space and in a circle and we're going to be dancing in the middle of the garden. So it feels this is what we're actually doing. The Gail is leading us into the garden. The Zoom is our garden at the moment. <laughs> um, virtual garden, the trees, thinking about the trees, we all connect into the trees through our heart. So, um, yeah, I always had a connection with the nature. And although my dad always taught me, I'm a friend of the nature, and I always been friend of the nature, I never realized actually that I'm a part of the nature too. And it's only through the campaigning locally with the children, with the community groups, and through different kinds of activism that I 
came to learn how important trees they are and that they are part of our community. Um, so there is a lot of land grab, lots of land abuse, lots of soil and water abuse and trees are really suffering. And I think they're really calling us to come and help them. And um, so this is why we are here to raise our voice for those who don't have or don't speak English necessarily or any human language. Uh, that doesn't mean that they do not communicate. Uh, trees are one of the oldest species on the planet and apparently if they didn't know how to communicate they wouldn't be able to survive all this time. Just because their language is different than ours it doesn't mean that they don't have it. So yeah we have to learn how to listen to the trees with our hearts and just feel um, with our hearts how to listen to them. So this is how um, I suppose I had a lot of writing, but I'm just talking from my heart in here. Um, yeah, I've been trying, thinking all different things that I want to say, so much to say, but yeah, I think just we all can connect with our local trees, like find what is your nearest tree, what species of the trees, uh, what is their symbolism, what is medicine does it hold? Usually the trees that are growing near us are meant to be near us and we're meant to connect to them. So I would encourage every person to find out what those trees are. Uh, and, and basically it came to my understanding, we can't protect something with that we don't know what it is. And in our European Western society, we wasn't necessarily taught how to look for that. And, learn what trees are living on our streets and so we need to go back into the garden and back listening to the trees learning what those trees are what medicine they bring we all have the nearest trees and uh, campaign for them protect them when you can there is a beautiful um groups out there already who are helping to do these things such as movement rights or global rights for nature um, the movements who are giving the voices to those who don't have any such as rivers or uh, trees or uh, mountains or lakes so look out for them uh, support them join the groups um, yeah see what you can do to connect with the trees um, because the trees are our medicine as Gail said and um, we need to learn how to um, how to get their teachings and how to listen to them better so with this in my heart I'm saying thank you and deep love and gratitude to all the plants and all the trees and all the water and all the mountains and all the air, air. and um, I want to say thank you and deep love gratitude to everyone and on the all corner side, uh, four corners of the planet. Thank you, Gail, for holding us into this space and for in, into this beautiful ceremonial space. We really much appreciate your gifts and your sharings. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Molly. And now, Molly's husband, Gabriel Tosti, aka G. Delic, is a musician, and he will tell us about his experience of co creating this music that we've danced to today, and also co creating music with the plants and the trees, as well as how this composition was created. And perhaps he'll tell us about his upcoming album, Magish. We'll leave that up to him. But uh, Pamela, can you unmute? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to your uh, beautiful uh, and ceremonial 
Uh, I am really grateful to you for this experience because you, it, it's been really wonderful to work with this uh, um, track. Uh, and I've been, you know, a lot of, I spend a lot of my time with the, with the plants, play, making music, um, because, um, you know, this is what I'm doing, you know, music is my, my life, so you know, I'm a musician, and I spent the last two years making music with the plants, that's actually been more than two years, and uh, the, 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 the reason why I started this was because we, we wanted to uh, engage with the, with the people more uh, and to experiment, you know, how to um, this bring in the sound to, to the people, uh, or the, the, the move them to, to have more emotion towards plants. Because, in fact, in a few, can you hear in the background some? Yeah, this this is the, the Peach Lily has been making music, you know, since meeting started and um, and the, you know it's just going on and on so I, I I haven't you know all I did is connecting uh, and this reading the electrical pulse that goes through the plants and the plants you know have a different way of communicating with one another and um, you know with this is transformed with this synthesizer here is transforming into sound is picking up the, the, the electrical impulse and so the plants is playing and the plants learn how to play and when I done the track uh, uh, the back in fact for the um, three I did have the plant playing as well and I think she really likes it <laughs> she must feel the energy but no it's um, so yeah no uh, we've been uh, um, in, you know, interacting with plants and, and we've been trying to understand the way they communicate with one another and, the, and how they, you know, the feeling changes to the emotional and the vibration and the, the vibration that we, we, we have has a lot effect on, on our surrounding ourselves as well. Um, the plants around us. So, um, yeah, it's kind of uh, it's amazing now is really singing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so yeah, it's been really nice to work with your, uh, with your, um, your um, with this track. And uh, I, I think that now I have another one that I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of gonna be ready soon and um, yeah what else uh, thank you very much for <laughs> inviting me and um, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome Gabri that's beautiful music the piece Lily's making and, and is that the same piece Lily that's that's on Bandcamp that you've recorded Yeah, Pamela, can you unmute Gabri again? Myself now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's learned how to sing very nicely, especially when um, feeling relaxed. As I said, you know, it's really nice now. It's just really floating and a beautiful sound. Uh, but, you know, many times, you know, when we try to connect with trees, you know, it happens in a different occasion. When the tree, because in the, in the urban uh, town, you know, in the city, the trees are put for for beauty, you know, so they planted trees there and plant the tree. Oh, I don't need this tree here. Let's cut this tree and put it there, you know. And they, they use the nature and uh, the people think that, yeah, okay, there's a tree there. Oh, you know what? This tree is a bit annoying over there. Let's get rid of it. Ah, boom. And, and so they, a lot of people, they don't have this feelings they don't have feeling connection with the with the nature as much as we really should have and uh, i think the music of the band really helps this connection however the, the in the urban you know in the city uh, the tree are left um 
isolated from the other trees. So they don't have this communication as in nature, you, you have in forest, they, you know, they communicate from underneath the ground. You know? So they warn each other if it's uh, some, some danger for them or they can, they can warn all the way down the, the valley, you know, you know, they can give so parasites can attack them. Uh, but here, no, they're very isolated, and um, so you know, it's nice to share the love with them. I hug a lots of tree when I go around. <laughs> I feel like uh, it's very nice to hug trees, um, especially now when we had this pandemic. You know, with everybody was uh, at home, you couldn't really talk to each other. You know, you have to wear a mask. Blah, blah, blah. But the tree, I always when I feel it, you know, always. You know, and feel that they are alive and uh, they, you know, they, they have a different concept of time. So we, we, you know, we turn to rush a lot when we do things. So we, we, when we talk, we act. The trees has a very different time uh, concept. Much long presses, I mean, uh, you have some plants that makes a very long sounds, you know, very gentle sounds. Sometimes they don't speak at all, you know. Maybe there's there's a question in the chat for you, Gabri. It says, "Do you do some recordings during storms as well?" That's from Paul, I think. Do you do some recording during the storm as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. But I'm curious what she sounded like when I was drumming and singing. Yes, when oh it was a, it was a big storm outside, and uh, I was doing the recording during the storm, and uh, it was all quite connected. You know, there was lots of water going as well. The water has a massive, I mean, it's vibes, it's life, and it's nice to see it behind the Mali. There, but it's true, you know, that, you know, for, uh, for, for sounds, you know, even for the connector, then I pick the sounds, I, I usually wet the leaf and I make sure that everything is wet. So what, water is a real good, for, you know, for connection. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think even when it's rain, there's a lot of energy. Yeah, and Paul says a lot of trees fell down there in Holland where he is last week. And Paul, you're welcome to unmute yourself and join the conversation if you'd like. Can you hear them in panic in storms like that? Can you hear the panic in the trees? Yes. I'm sorry because I've seen this uh, unmuted. I'm not so used to this uh, um, uh, Zoom call. It's my first. You're doing great. Yeah, Zoom is a challenge. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the first of my own, anyway. I've done it before. Yeah. yeah so. Anyway. Uh, yeah, no, it was a storm going in. Yeah, it was very, very strong path from here in UK and then now it's better and it feels like spring is coming. Uh, but, you know, we still have a lot. I mean, I think the ceremonial, um, the connection that we have, I mean, we do these amazing things to connect everybody around the world. The internet is very special because we can, we can share in this important, uh, uh, loving and some, uh, somehow involving the, the nature that we are nature connection with everything uh, and the music is for me is you know I'm a musician so like I, I do a lot of um, I express myself with it through music and um, I think that moments we need a lots of creativity love uh, you know feeling that there is not just all this stuff going on but there is a lot of really positive thing and we can gather around the sacred tree like you said before 
Maybe I'll let Ron say. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you, Gabri. Yeah. Did you want to say anything about your album that you're about to release or your? Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can mention that. Yeah, it's about to come out. Um, is ready really it just uh, we are just waiting for the, the CD to arrive it's called Magish and uh, it's kind of psychedelic psychedelic rock you know the, um, not much rock actually it's just psychedelic um, and very, it's got lots of um, nature actually it's got um, birds and water as well making sound uh, it's interesting you know it will be a, a available on the bank camp to order if anybody is interested they can contact me uh, thank you <laughs> yeah it's been a joy working with you and molly on this piece and it's amazing i could just send you a drumming a shamanic drumming and you could put the pieces together so beautiful. Pleasure. yeah yes. and, and we're working on another piece i want to encourage everybody out there to uh Check back in with us because we're working on a piece about the storms in life and how they renew the water in us. So that will be probably what we'll present on the 28th through the 22nd of March. We'll have a chance to dance with the storms in life and learn about what it teaches us when we go through things like we're going through right now. So please, you know, continue to um, check in with us and continue to dance in these ritual ways. This is a practice. And the more we do these ritual dances and things together from all over the world, the more human we become and the more our soul can connect with the collective soul through our dreams, through our rituals, through our teachings, through all that we share in these beautiful ways. I'm so grateful to everyone here. I'm grateful to Stephen for the beautiful photo that I forgot to give him credit for that is the headliner for this event, the, the image that you see on the event page. And I'm grateful to John Raymer for making this possible through Sign Network and to Becky for meeting us here and getting us started and keeping us going and to everyone who will join us and share this with their friends we're so delighted and so amazed that our last dance when we called in the eagles to bring endings in 2022 so the earth can renew we're so delighted to see that we've gotten over a thousand views on the facebook live recording so we encourage uh, those of you who are viewing this on the recording to please share with your friends and keep dancing, you know, just keep dancing. And if you would like uh, to dance on just the, uh, the music without the guidance, that's on SoundCloud. And you can find me on SoundCloud by searching for Singing Mist, S-I-N-G-I-N-G-M-I-S-T. You can find the song with the guidance and and Molly and I are recording, you know, the dance there so that you can dance with us and Pamela can put that link in the chat if you'd like that or you can find me on Facebook if you have any questions and does anybody have any questions right now before we sign off. Any topics that we haven't covered that anyone would like to get into or or anything that you want to ask any of us? Okay, looks like we're clear. I'm going to speak us out with a poem by John Trudell on this topic. He says, my relatives, the clouds, one time I was visiting with my relatives, the clouds, the mountains, the sky, the trees. My relatives touched my spirit, nudged it lovingly. Listen to us, impatient one. We are forever. You must remember the gentleness of time. You are struggling to be who you are. 
You say you want to learn the old ways, struggling to learn when all you must do is remember. Remember the people, remember sky and earth, remember the people have always struggled to live in harmony and in peace. Struggle against selfishness and weakness so the people may live as nations. The old ways are hard. The people have always had to work together. Remember, impatient one, remember and live. Do not be afraid of truth. Respect discipline. Share your life so the people may live. Honor sky and earth. Honor yourself, honor your relations. Remember, impatient one, the gentleness of time so the people may live. And again, that's John Trudell in 1982 from Living in Reality. I wanna thank you all again for being here in this beautiful way. And I wanna close our sacred container of ritual sharing with a song that came in the dream time when we initiated a pipe in 2018 from the Santa Clara Pueblo pipe maker, Great Antelope. You can read about that on my Facebook page, uh, my group page, or on the YouTube with this pipe. It came in the Lakota ceremony language and it um, translates as sending a voice to ancestors with a common people's pipe. With compassion of grandmothers, we want to live. Drum of sacred elk nation, pipe of black-tailed deer, sending our voice on this good day with this common people's pipe. Oh, Hey, we just shot a ton of grateful when we're able to share our teachings like this and be heard again and be understood. So thank you all. Pamela, if you can end the recording. <laughs>